All right, guys, so we're back with another conversation style video. We got a lot of good feedback from the one I posted on uh, Monday. So I wanted to do this again and discuss something that is on my mind because I have done a lot of YouTube shorts using provocative titles. Uh, the one in question I'm going to be discussing today is that pistols are trash for home defense. Don't hate the player, hate the game. You kind of have to use the clickbait type title to drive engagement. Uh, YouTube already does enough to suppress gun related content. So you kind of have to know again, how to drive engagement and that gets a lot of people fired up when they hear that because a lot of guys use pistols for home defense. And before we go down that rabbit hole, I just wanted to throw this out there. If you guys are blessed enough to do so, uh, and you want to support the channel, you can head on over to brownells.com. It's the, they're the biggest supporter of the channel right now and use discount code RDB10. That's range day bro 10 RDB10 saves you guys 10% and helps the channel out a little bit as well. So if you're blessed enough to do so, if you have the means and you have gear that you actually need, you know, I just put a video out on how don't buy into the hype. You know, I'm not trying to encourage everybody to go into financial ruin uh, to support the channel. Don't do that. But if you have the means and there's something you're going to buy anyways, using a discount code does help out as well as rangedaybro.com. We have some new merch. I designed all the t-shirts myself. So head on over to rangedaybro.com. Check out the merch, hoodies, t-shirts, things like that. If you guys like them, let me know in the comments. And uh, if, you, if you like one enough, pick it up. So it'd be a, a big help to the channel when you get to rep some of the Range Day Bro gear. With that being said, um, let's go back to the YouTube short in question. I usually don't read YouTube comments on my shorts because that seems to attract a lot of foreign people and it's kind of the worst of the internet. Whereas these long form videos get a lot more of my serious subscribers and the guys who've been watching me for quite some time now and the more serious shooters as well. And um, But this, this video in particular, I decided to go down the rabbit hole and start reading some of the comments because uh, a guy actually crossed over onto one of my more recent reviews from that YouTube short content and just comment on the video, something along the lines of like, hey, just come in here to comment how effing stupid you are. And um, again, I usually don't get into bickering matches with these people because again, you're a faceless person on the internet. I actually have a life. I don't want to ruin my mood or my day or, you know, I have to be my best for my family. So I usually don't get into these talks, but I thought this one was worth explaining a little bit further because in a, in a YouTube short when you have 15 seconds or, or 60 seconds maximum to explain you know what you're trying to put out there uh, it's a lot more difficult to do right and again I knew what I was doing I knew that I'd fire some people up and that's why I titled it that way to drive that engagement however what I said I stand behind and I'm not I'm essentially doubling down but also let me just be very clear a pistol is amazing for home defense if that's all you have especially if you're trained with it it's much better than a baseball bat or a golf club or mace or calling 911. It's it's leagues better than that. So I don't want anyone to get it twisted. I'm saying it's trash in comparison to an AR-15, and there's a lot of reasons that I'm going to dive into here. Uh, but with that all being said, if that's all you have or if that's what you're most comfortable with, most proficient with, even though the AR-15 is better for me and I believe all other things being created equal as far as your skill level the layout of your home, like all things, all other variables being equal, a rifle is always better for a gunfight than a pistol. There's a reason SWAT teams, special forces enter buildings with their rifles. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here going into some of the ridiculous comments in that comment section, but one of the comments was, this guy has no idea what he's talking about, and I know this because SWAT and special forces, you know, pull out their pistols when they go to enter a building, and that's just outright false. There's literally zero evidence of that. And if there is everyone who, anyone who's ever done that as a professional, they definitely aren't teaching it nowadays. And so I reached out to a professional uh, instructor that I know on Instagram and I kind of posed a couple questions to him in an unbiased way just to hear his initial response. And we'll go over that here shortly. But I just wanted to just get out there up front and say, yeah, that probably was more of a clickbait prerogative um, or, uh, uh, you know, a it was a way to rile people up to get them to engage in the video. But what I said, I stand by. So the main, I haven't watched the video actually since I, since I created it. So I don't remember exactly every single thing that I said in the video, but essentially it was when you present your pistol and you're in a shooting stance to shoot your gun, your muzzle of your pistol is about the same length as your muzzle on a rifle would be when you have it shouldered. So when you're in a shooting stance, your pistol and your, mu and, and your muzzle for your pistol and your muzzle for your, your rifle or 14.5, something like that, are gonna be essentially at the same distance from a wall. So as far as like CQC, everyone's like, well, pistols are way better and uh, for CQC because they're so much more maneuverable. And everyone's like, well, yeah, like when you're holding your gun out like that, of course it's the same length as an AR-15. But you know, when you pull it back to your chest, 
it's way more maneuverable. It's like, well, yeah, you could say the same thing about a rifle. You can pull rifle up over your shoulder. Um, I'll just show you, you got my URGI, it's a legal rifle here. It's a 16 inch barrel, but it's 14.5 pin and welded. So legal rifle length, uh, AR-15. The same thing can be said for an AR-15. If I want to be more maneuverable, I'll just pop it up here over my shoulder and when I'm ready, I drive it out and put it in my shoulder pocket. It's, it's that simple, okay? So the same thing can be said for the AR-15. Again, getting a little ahead of myself, getting into these comments, I wanted to kind of, kind of break it down a little bit more before I started just debunking all these guys in the comment section, but I just wanted to be clear about what my intention was. My intention wasn't to shame anybody that's using a pistol for home defense. Again, it's leagues better than all of our friends in other countries that are, you know have to rely on a baseball bat or a knife uh, when a guy comes in their house with a gun. I mean, criminals don't follow the law. So if you live in Australia and you have all your guns confiscated and a criminal comes in with a gun, you're kind of shit out of luck. You'd rather have a pistol in that situation than have nothing. However, for me and for I think the vast majority of people, all things being equal as far as your skill level and, and your training, the rifle is gonna be better in every scenario and I stand by that. So I guess I'm doubling down on that topic. And so I wanted to clear the air and kind of state my opinion and state some facts about it. So I guess let's just start with, we, we covered that already. So the pistol isn't trash. It's better than having no firearm. And, um, but let's just start debunking some of the comments. So off the top of my head, I'm not gonna read down the list of like 2000 comments that are on this video because there's like 2,000 comments of people just being like, this guy is an idiot, he has no idea what he's talking about. Uh, let's just start with the first and probably one of the most common uh, rebuttals to my video, which is that a AR-15 is gonna over-penetrate through 15 walls, a brick wall, and then go into your neighbor's house and then heat-seeking, find your neighbor's child in its crib and blow his brains out. Let's just debunk that right away. So first of all, that's false. Um, there's been tons of videos, and the most recent one I can think of is Grand Thumb, when he shot through a bunch of drywall walls that he built to spec. It turns out the AR-15 actually fragments and stops going through walls a lot faster than 9mm does. With that being said, you should have defensive ammo in your rifle or in your pistol for when you're in your home for that exact reason, because a hollow point or a round that is designed with a ballistic tip, like Hornady Critical, Critical Duty, for instance, which is what I keep in my uh, bedside gun, is gonna have a lot more, it's gonna fragment, it's what it's meant to do. It's gonna open up and it's gonna do more damage on target, but it's also gonna stop a lot faster and go through far fewer walls than a FMJ round. So whether you're shooting nine mil or 5.56, five, you should be shooting hollow point defensive rounds. So that's the first point. The second point is all other things being created equal, as I've stated, it's been debunked plenty of times on the internet. I'm not gonna go build a bunch of walls and do this video just for the haters in my comment section. The 9 mil travels through far more walls because it is a much heavier bullet and there's a lot more franging that needs to happen before it actually stops You know that core of that bullet. It's a 124 grain round versus a 55 grain or, or you know, 77 grain at the high end for 5.56. So let's just debunk that right out the gate. Same goes for shotguns. Unless you're shooting birdshot, shotgun, double out buckshot also travels through as many or more walls than a 5.56. And again, that was a part of this. So Branching from the the, the over penetration argument, because there's really not much else to say about that. That's just a that's a fud lore thing. Like, oh, you shoot up AR-15, it's gonna just travel through 50, 70 walls like it's like it's a freaking 20 millimeter round. It's not going to. That has been debunked many times. So trans going from that to the next thing, which is why not use a shotgun? The shotgun is king. The shotgun is the absolute end all be all for home defense. This one is, again, pretty clear to me. Shotguns have a tendency to overpenetrate unless you're using birdshot, which is not effective um, for stopping somebody who's trying to kill you. And I don't wanna have to rely on a birdshot round or yeah, oh, just rack your shotgun and the, the criminals will run away, okay? Not how it works, okay? That's definitely FUD lore. Someone's kicking your door down, they're not gonna hear your shotgun racking. And if there's multiple targets, whether you have a semi-auto or, or a pump shotgun, it's way, your, your capacity is way down. So you have maybe six, maybe eight if you have an extended tube on your shotgun. You're still dealing with the length issue because most shotguns are longer barrel lengths. Um, and then you have the skill issue. If it's not a semi-auto, then you're gonna have to remember to pump that thing every time you pull the trigger, your adrenaline's pumping. So I don't have anywhere near the time on my shotguns that I do on my AR-15s. But again, 
considering all other things equal, we've all seen the videos. If you follow Mr. Guns and Gear, one of my favorite YouTubers, he's posts videos all the time on Instagram of multiple armed intruders, not one, not two, not three. I mean, we're talking like four or five people hopping out of a Prius, following people home, or just kicking doors down in the middle of the night. You're not going to have you want the best thing to defend your life with. I mean, a semi-auto AR-15 is just simply the best. It's the least training curve, it's the easiest to handle. A 12-gauge shotgun, you're talking about a single mother, even most small-statured men, a 12-gauge is gonna kick way more, it's just not as effective. In my opinion, again, this is all my opinion, guys. You can take this or leave it, it's, it's up to you. I'm just explaining my thought process on, and, and it's not just me, I'm, I'm piggybacking off a lot of smarter guys, a lot of professionals who, who agree with me and who I've learned all this from, but, Shotgun has a lot more of a learning curve. It's got a lot more kick and a lot less capacity, although it does have the advantage of the AR-15 with the points of contact. So there's the first two biggest uh, arguments in the comment section. This guy's an idiot. They all, they all point that out. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. This is just another example why you shouldn't listen to gun tubers. He has no clue. And the first argument is, yeah, if I want to overpenetrate and kill my neighbors, of course, even if the bullet makes it through your house, whether it's nine mil or five, five, six, it's always going to end up in your neighbor's house. Uh, I live on in a two-story home. All the bedrooms in my house are upstairs. Here's another really good point. Obviously, number one, train with your shit. Know how to use your tools and be competent with them. Be confident with them. Number two, have a plan. Know the layout of your house. Like, someone breaks into my house, they could take whatever they want from the first floor. I'm defending that staircase because everyone I love is going to be upstairs in a nighttime situation when it's at night. And I know that if I'm shooting, it's going to be down and anything that doesn't hit my target is going to hit the ground immediately. Now that's an ideal scenario, I get it, I get it. You don't always have the ideal scenario to plan for, but I'm not gonna be planning my home defense strategy based off of what may happen if I miss my target and it goes through my window and into my neighbor's house. It's gonna happen with a nine mil, it's gonna happen with a buckshot. It doesn't matter. Yeah, a 556 is flatter shooting out further, but when we're talking about most residential neighborhoods, what is the next house over, 50 yards from you? A nine mil is gonna fly the same trajectory essentially as a 556 would. So that argument is, Total FUD lore, it's, it's so dumb, but people love to repeat that argument about the overpenetration. So that's the first one. The second one is why not use a shotgun? If you rack it, it'll scare them away. Completely ridiculous. If you're relying on your shotgun racking, and why, why even have rounds in it, right? I mean, it is so ridiculous. But if, hey, if you want to defend your family that way, then you know this is a free country. Go ahead and you do you, brother. I just hope I don't read about it on the news one day. But hopefully that works, right? Hopefully most criminals do you know, tend to flee at the first sign of armed resistance, but I don't think racking it's going to do it. I think you're going to have to pull the trigger. But again, that's the second argument is why not a shotgun? Again, harder to shoot, a lot more recoil. You're going to have the same overpenetration issues you have with 9 mil. And so that brings me to the main point, which is why is the AR-15 the best thing for home defense? Okay, kind of touched on them with this whole explaining why 9 mil, a handgun and a, and a shotgun aren't the best, but it's going to give you the highest capacity, with the lightest recoil and the most points of contact, it's the easiest to handle, right? So in a in a situation where, and it's the, one of the simplest to use. I know pistols are very simple as well, but a proper grip, a proper stance, proper follow-up shots are not nearly as easy to do. You take any new shooter to the range, I'm talking like never touched a gun before in their, in their life. You put them at 10 yards with a pistol and see what the group size looks like. I bet it's I bet it's a good eight, 10 inches if they're lucky, right? On their first time shooting at a, at a decent pace. And this is when they're calm and they're standing on a flat range. And you hand them an AR-15, the same person is going to be able to punch in a group, you know, if, they're, if they have any kind of decent instruction on how to stand and hold the gun, they're going to get a much, much tighter group because it is just that much easier to shoot an AR-15. So with that being said, I'm going to pull my phone out and start to reference an actual professional who does training for a living in Orion Training Group. Some of you guys, I'm sure, have heard of them. And I reached out to, to them to ask them the same exact question. I'll just kind of read you the conversation as it went. So... Um, I asked them, Hey, can you tell me which is better for home defense? Again, didn't want to be biased. I just asked them, Hey, what would be better an AR-15 or a handgun? And I said, I'm going to be talking about it tonight on a video. And I wanted a opinion from a professional. And I said, I have my own opinions and biases, but I want to hear what yours is. And he says, I think you're asking the wrong question. I said, what question should I be asking? Does the person in question have the capability to not only hit some, uh, a home invader and hit them in a high priority area? If the answer is yes, then it doesn't matter what you use beyond the question of expanding ammo that won't overpenetrate. So kind of stating the obvious there, I think he, you know, he was, I was trying to get him to bite on the bait and he was just like, no, it's about being proficient with whatever you have because a pistol or a rifle, as long as you know how to 
place well, well, you know, shoot well placed shots and have good defensive ammo and have a plan, then it's better than nothing. And that's really what matters, which is, which is 100% true. Um, he said he does keep a, a pistol with a weapon mounted light and a dot and good nine millimeter expanding rounds. And that's what he's using. And that's what he's confident with. I said, 100%, that is the point. Training with whatever you have, being competent with the tools you have. But for the sake of the video, all of the things being considered, so everything else being considered equal, um, as far as skill goes, would could you make the argument that an AR-15 gives you superior recoil control, ballistic performance for home defense, when the only thing you can control is the weapon you choose to defend yourself with? For me, more points of contact, higher capacity, and over penetration being somewhat of a myth, especially when you use good defensive ammo um, and you plan for the layout of your home, um, you know, what do you think about that? And he goes, this, and this is the point I want to drive home to you guys. This is coming from Orion training group. This, these guys literally train CQB, CQC. This is what they do for a living. And I'm pretty sure they're SWAT guys. Um, don't, don't quote me. I'm pretty sure they, they have that professional background, but they train civilians as well as military and law enforcement. And he goes, the same reason that SWAT and special forces use rifles to make entry instead of pistols. Everything about it is better. All else held equal. The only downside may be maneuverability if you're in a cramped space like a small house, trailer, or older closed floor plans with no narrow hallways. So obviously he kind of stated the obvious there, but I, it comes from somebody who has that professional background, who literally has done it, has kicked doors and, and made entry and trains people on how to do that. And so the, the point I want to prove to you guys and kind of just, like I said, I'm doubling down is all other things being considered equal, it is superior in every way. And that is why special forces and that is why SWAT make entry with rifles because it is just better to have that firepower in a gunfight when all other things are stacked against you. The one thing you can, can control is the rifle or the, or the weapon you use to defend your home with. Why not have the best thing suited for, for yourself to defend your family? So again, I kind of just wanted to reassure myself because you know, after reading 2,000 comments about how dumb I am, I kind of had to to reassure myself, talk to somebody who's actually professional, who I respect and who I look up to and one day hope to train with. And he, again, he said, look, I use a pistol for home defense. However, uh, all other things being considered equal, a rifle is better. So I'm not sure I didn't really get into to why he doesn't use a rifle for, for himself. But again, he did point out the fact that there's a reason professionals go in with rifles. When they fucking took out Osama bin Laden, he wasn't in a field. He was in his home and they went in with 416s. So Again, just wanted to explain to everybody who may either doubt or be second guessing, because some people just look at me like I'm crazy, especially older folks. You know, I'm, I'm 30 years old, but a lot of the guys that I hang with are a lot older because they're more mature and I, I tend to vibe more with those guys. You know, they look at me like I'm crazy and I'm like, you need an Air 15 for home defense or you know, it's the most preferred. It's the best thing you could use for home defense. And they're like, why not a shotgun, dude? And I'm like, well, shotgun's better than a baseball bat, but... Here's why the Air 15 is better, in my opinion. So that's it, guys. I just wanted to see what you guys thought about that. Um, again, all of this is my opinion and also the opinion of, of other professionals um, who train in the CQB, CQC space. So yeah, you could hold your pistol around like this and walk around your house, but you're never going to get an accurate shot on target if you're, if you're walking around like this. I understand it's easier to maneuver if you're running around your house uh, a little bit easier, but if you do a little bit of training, and shout out to Orion Training Group if you guys are able to, you know, sign up for a class with them or any anyone who's reputable in that space and get some training with your rifle, you're going to be able to move just as quickly, maybe a little bit slower with your rifle. But then when it comes time to go, you know, to actually get into action, you're going to have, a, you know, a higher capacity magazine, you're going to have a faster, more, uh, you know, more effective bullet on target when you get those hits. And you're gonna have faster follow up shots if you have multiple intruders. And all of those things are the things that you can control. The rest is is out of your control. You know, the criminal has the advantage of when they're going to break into your home and the criminal, you know, and I saw a lot of Europeans in the comment section, like Americans watch too many movies. It's like, bro, I just follow Mr. Guns and Gear on Instagram. Like that's all you need. And I'm not like sleeping, you know, with, you know, with a grenade under my pillow, but my rifle does stay with a loaded mag and empty chamber next to my bedside. And if there's ever a bump in the night, I have a flashlight on it. I have EOTech on it. And that's the first thing I just grab. I can grab it while I'm laying in bed. So that was a whole nother debate. And I'll, uh, I'll link the video here in, in this video as well. So you can check out the YouTube short. Again, YouTube shorts are a really archaic. Way. They're a great way to grow the channel because they get tons of uh, engagement and views and whatnot. But it's so hard to, to prove a point in a YouTube short. And, 
and explain yourself well. And that's why I'm doing these more of these like long form conversations with you guys. So I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about it, what you use for home defense. If you use a pistol, if you use a rifle, if you use a shotgun, or if you're in another country, you know, tell me what it's like to not have any of those things knowing that armed criminals may kick your door down. I mean, that's a big reality for most of the world. And so, yeah, I just wanted to hear you guys' opinions. I wanted to kind of clarify my position on this because I'm not saying, you know, if you just have a pistol, you're, you're doomed. Like, absolutely not. Like, get your training with it. Learn how to use it. Of course, it's better than nothing. However, if you have the option, if you have both, why wouldn't you use your, your rifle? And, um, you know, it's not for everybody. Maybe you have kids and you have to have a quick access safe on your nightstand for a pistol. Uh, I do have a baby, but she's not even crawling yet. So I have a, a lot easier right now, but they have quick access safes for, for rifles as well. So, um, yeah, with all that being said, guys, I just wanted to talk with you guys, start this dialogue a little bit more on the more civilized side of my channel on the long form videos because the shorts are just kind of attract the worst kind of people, it seems like. And again, I just wanted to bring this out there to the community and just hear y'all's opinion on it. That's Those are all the reasons that I have. I, I might've forgot a few as well along the way, but big shout out to Orion Training Group for, for hooking me up with that information and kind of you know talking through it with me and you know reiterating to me that I'm not crazy for thinking a, a rifle is better for any gunfight. In fact, it's better in every situation besides concealed carry because obviously it's a lot harder to conceal a full-size rifle than it is a pistol. But if you have the opportunity to defend your family with the best thing possible, why not use the best thing possible at your disposal? Again, have a plan, have training, get used to your rifles, have defensive ammunition in your rifle, have a light on your gun. You know, if you want to, it's always recommended, I think, to have a sling, you know, sling it up. Um, and that way, if you need to go hands-free for something, you can. But all of those things aren't going to matter if you don't have a plan and you panic and, you know, you're going you're gonna to have your adrenaline pumping. So if you're okay on the flat range, you're going to be terrible in real life situation. So that's why I strive to be, you know, try to get better on the flat range. That way if shit really is hitting the fan and my adrenaline's pumping and my fine motor skills are slightly off, I still have that, you know, muscle memory to go back to, to actually engage a target and, and hit. So all that being said, guys, thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed this kind of stuff, um, liking, commenting, subscribing is a huge help. If you want to support the channel monetarily, uh, they have the super thanks down below. But if you want to, you know, get yourself a discount on Brownells, RDB10 is the bro is the is the code, the discount code for 10% off. And then rangedaybro.com for any merch or anything like that. But thank you guys again. Love all you guys. Appreciate you. Stay safe, stay dangerous. Range Bro out.